Welcome back to this series. Today we're going to make our header mobile responsive. Before we get started on that, we have a few things to take care of first. Uh, first, let's look at the gulpfile.js. There is an error in here. The uh, SAS needs to happen before the post CSS. I've updated the gist on GitHub to reflect this. Once that's taken care of, we can go ahead and restart our gulp watcher. I want to organize our SAS files a little bit better. Let's make a new directory called components. And now let's look at what we have in here. We have uh, some styles for the anchor tag and then some styles for our navigation. I'm going to grab the anchor tag here. And inside components, make a new file called elements.scss. And this will be where we keep any custom components that are just based on an HTML element like the anchor tag here. Let's go back to our style.scss file and just say import components elements. There we go. I'm going to leave the navigation alone for now because we're going to do a lot of work in that section today. Uh, the next thing we want to look at is let's take a look at the header PHP file. Now remember we uh, we commented out this screen reader text. So let's, uh, let's bring that back real quick. So the basic idea here is we want this link to be hidden unless somebody is actually using a screen reader. So let's go ahead and make a new directory called utilities. And in here, let's make a new file called accessibility SESS. All right, so let's grab our screen reader text class here drop it in here and we're going to say display none. So we'll normally hide it. However, when we're using a screen reader, so that's at media speech, we are going to display it. Once we have that done, let's go back over to our style.scss file and we are going to import utilities accessibility. Let's jump over to our web browser you can jump over to our web browser and refresh the page. Make sure we don't see that link there. That's... Now, one more thing we need to add is uh, let's look back here in our dashboard. Go to Appearance, Customize, and this is something that ships with underscores. Is they've already added the site identity section here. Um, I'm going to add a logo. I've grabbed the Tailwind CSS logo. We'll be using that. Don't need to crop it. And I'm also going to select the same image for the icon that shows up on the tab here. All right, let's publish that. Let's go back to our page here. And you can see there's an issue here with uh, with how it's lined up with our text. I'd really like the icon to be on the left side and our header text just be to the right. All right, so let's look at our header PHP file and see how that's happening. Uh, right down here in our site branding, we have the custom logo. Let's uh, Let's clean this up a little bit. We've got our H1 with a link to our site name. Just a little bit of cleanup here. And then we've got our description. So since the whole thing is being flexed, it's just stacking these things one on top of each other. So the logo, the header, and the description. What we really like to do is put the logo to the left of these two items. So what I'm going to do is just wrap these two items in a div. There we go. Let's take a look at that real quick. Now once we put them together, let's uh, look here at the elements. Inside site branding we have the link and our div. If we change this site branding to use flex, well that seems to fix it for us. We can also do item center just to make everything line up better. All right, let's fix that in code. So site branding is going to be flex item center. Let's add a little bit of spacing here. So let's just add on this div class of uh, margin left four. Awesome. So we're now ready to work on the responsive design here. Um, you can see as we come in closer, the everything just kind of gets squished together. So my first thought is when we get to a smaller screen size, to just drop these links down and center everything on the page. So let's do that first. 
Tailwind already ships with its own responsive attributes. If you look at uh, tailwind.js, you can see the screen sizes, which you can configure yourself. Uh, we have small, medium, large, and extra large. We're going to be using this to change our design based on the different screen sizes. Now on our smaller screen size here, we can see that we, we want to change this flex box. Right now, it's flexing it in a row. We really want it to be flex column. That gets us close to what we want. However, when we get bigger, we want it to go back to the flex row. So what I'm going to do here is add one of our responsive attributes. So we'll say medium flex row. So now as we get smaller, we go back to flex column. And once we get that medium size, flex row. So let's go back to PHP Storm and add these attributes. I'm going to give us some more room here. So flex column, medium flex row. Let's go back down to our small size. Um, it looks like we need a little spacing. We also should probably center this text here. So let's so let's center that text. That looks better. Um, however, again, once we get to the bigger size, we want that on the left side. So we have text center. And then just like we did the flex row and flex column, we'll do medium text left. That's what we want. Go back to PHP Storm and add these. Text center, medium text left. Now we also want to add some padding on top of these links. So let's look here. We've got this uh, element, the navigation element with the uh, main navigation class. So let's change this. That's another one of the underscores classes. We don't need it anymore. How about margin top four? Much better. All right. I think our uh, tablet design looks pretty good. Let's move on to the mobile. Now on mobile devices, we'd really want to have this hidden with a little button that we can click to, to show all the links. And uh, we should also have the links stacked vertically to make it easier to hit with your finger. So let's bring back this button that we commented out last episode. Uh, let's clean it up a little bit. Got a little out of whack. All right. Let's take a look at it. All right. Well, that's pretty ugly. We can't just have text that says primary menu. Now, I've gone ahead and grabbed an SVG element that we're going to use here. So let's uh, open with the text editor. I'm going to copy that. And let's go back into PHP Storm. And instead of saying primary menu, we just want to show this SVG element. Let's refresh the page. Okay, now we have our hamburger. So we want to hide these on mobile and show this. And on desktop, we want to show the links and hide the, the button. So let's take care of that. So on our button here, get rid of this menu toggle class. We want to say it is normally visible, but on medium screens, it's hidden. So let's check that out. So we get larger, it disappears. Perfect. So let's add those classes in here real quick. We have medium, hidden. Now as I'm working on this, I just uh, scrolled this out to a larger screen size, and you can see we still have that margin on top. So let's add a medium size margin top of zero. There, now it's back to centered with the text here. And again, as we make it smaller, we get the extra margin on top. Now we don't really want the button on medium. We actually just want it small. So let's change that. There we go. So we have desktop, no margin on top. We have tablet view, pops down. And then once we get to mobile, that's where we'll show our button. So let's go ahead and make these changes in the code real quick. So our button will only be shown once we get above a small size. And we want this margin top to be zero on a medium size and larger. All right, we also want to hide these links themselves until we actually click on the button. Uh, so let's handle that. Um, now what we want to do is we want to add a class to our unordered list here of just hidden, right? 
but we're currently overwriting that with what is in our style CSS file. So I'm gonna comment this out for now. We're gonna just use it as a reference. And what we wanna do on the header is we wanna add a couple things here. Container, so what do we want to modify? We're gonna use the UL. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do menu class. And let's add back in here the things that we wanted on the UL. So the list reset and flex. All right, let's take a look at that. Okay, so that added list, reflect, list reset and flex onto the UL. Um, but what about these LIs? We'll need to adjust those as well. Um, but first, let's just focus on the UL. We want it to be flex, but only for small and larger. Otherwise, we want hidden, right? So just like that, I'm gonna pop out once we get above the small and show the button on the mobile devices. So let's go in here and add this to be medium flex. I'm gonna leave off of the, the hidden attribute just so we can see it for now until we have that button actually working. So here we go. Now what we need to do is we need to have some space in between these to make them have room so you can click them easily with your finger. And also we've lost our padding on the side here. So what we'll need to do is create some new utilities. So what I'd really like to say here is um, maybe our li elements padding left four, right? So let's go into, let's create a new utility. So we'll go into our SAS utilities, do a new menu dot SCSS, and in our styles, let's make sure to import it. Let's import from utilities menu. And let's go ahead and create this class. Uh, we want to apply the padding left four, but to the actual li. So this is going to be on the ul, and we want to apply it to the li. Let's go back to the browser. All right, so that looks good. But when we go down to a smaller view, you can see that the padding is still there. We don't, we don't want that there. So I'd like to be able to say medium li padding left four. And in order to do that, all we have to do to make this responsive is say responsive. This is a tailwind directive. And what that's going to do is if, if we look down into the style CSS that's generated, so we come into our style CSS and here we have our LIPL4. And if we search, you'll see that it's already added the small attribute, medium, the large, and these are all inside these media queries for us. So now if we go back to the browser, refresh, so we have no padding left here and no padding left here. Once we get out to the desktop size, the padding left is there. So that's perfect. Now we need to do the same, so, same for the top and bottom. So again, what I'd like to be able to have here is I would like to say maybe li, maybe padding bottom four, but on medium, we wanna say li padding bottom zero. All right, let's go into our SAS file. Make another one here, li padding bottom four, apply padding bottom four, li padding bottom zero, apply padding bottom zero. Let's check it out. There's our padding bottom. So we get out here, no padding bottom. So the last thing we need to do here is we need to get this mobile button working. So let's put the hidden attribute back here and hide these elements while the, while the menu is closed. So back in our header PHP, we'll add hidden. All right, as we go out, hmm, ah, yes. We want the flex to start on small. On tablets, we want to show the menu. Um, we also actually want to put the padding left on small as well. So a quick adjustment there. 
All right, that's looking good. Now for the button, let's look at what underscores already ships with. Let's go back into the editor. We can go ahead and uh, close all these. Let's go into the JavaScript file navigation. And underscores already had a bunch of classes that it was adding and removing to show and hide the mobile navigation. Um, but we need to change just a little bit for us to work with Tailwind. So down here on the button on click, so this is what is being triggered when you click on this button here. And you can see it's uh, adding and removing classes that aren't working with what we're using. Instead of the container, we want to change the classes on the menu itself. And what we're going to change is instead of toggled, we have a class called hidden, right? So now, if we refresh the page, this is removing and adding the hidden class on the UL element. The last thing we need to do is if you look at the area expanded, which is um, again an accessibility feature, it says expanded false, but when I close the menu, it says expanded true. So we just need to reverse these. So true is false, false is true. Refresh. And now it's all working fine. I think I want to give a little bit extra spacing between the button and the first link here. So if we go back to header PHP, we have our button. Let's give it a margin bottom of four. That's better. And that is it for building a mobile navigation. Uh, I hope this showed how easy it is to use Tailwind's responsive utilities as well as building your own custom utility that is responsive. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up, and if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe.